Salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of Age of Empires 3 Thursday. We have so much to be thankful for and so much to be excited about, but I don't want to tarry too long. So let's get right into the map. We are on the map, Pampas Sierras, as Kevin picks up 30 food and the can now make the pasta sauce. And in the... <laughs> it's going to be one of those days. In the south of the map, playing in the color blue, as the Swedes, we have none other than the one, the only, Shake2020. I, <laughs> I love watching this guy play. He has a very, very fun play style, and uh, from all my interactions, he seems like a very, very nice person. Playing as one of his favorites, although uh, they are not doing so well in terms of their popularity among the civs. It is the Swedes, a civ that I'm actually trying to learn, so I am going to be taking notes on how Shake plays, because he is, I would be so bold as to say, one of the preeminent Swedish players in the community. Going with the double torp start, very, very standard. And in the north of the map, his opponent playing in the color red as the Dutch, the greatest of all civilizations. It is Kevin. Kevin is also a very, very, very good player. One of the best. And uh, I believe Dutch is also one of his favorite civs. So we have two top level players playing two of their most familiar civilizations. I think we're in for a good one. Uh, but why am I so excited? Well, it's because we did hit 100 subscribers, which, you know, in hindsight, is not the, the most major accomplishment, certainly not as big as uh, Kevin picking up 70 food, but it is something that I am incredibly grateful for. So thank you guys so much. I'm not going to gush and, and blurb and, and go on and on and on, uh, but thank you guys. I, I really appreciate it, and I hope you stay along for the ride. Meanwhile, Shake picking up the 90 wood... That is going to be incredible. Now, when it comes to Swede versus Dutch, I don't know if you guys saw the chat at the beginning of the game, but uh, Shake does not like this matchup, and I can see why. Dutch just has a lot of natural strengths against Sweden, number one. Uh, their economy, at least in the mid-game, can boom almost as well as Sweden's, if done right, which, I mean, if anybody's going to do it right, it's going to be Kevin. And uh, they also have a lot of units that, that counter any H2 play that Swede can do. Obviously, H2 Dutch Skirms are going to beat H2 Swedish Carolians. And uh, with some fancy maneuvering, a, a good Hussar Pop can take care of any leather cannons as well. So I don't know what Shake is going to try to do here. I suspect some sort of Torp Boom rather than something hyper-aggressive in H2. Maybe some sort of timing. Meanwhile, Kevin could go for a standard kind of four-bank uh, semi-FF, although making any cav against Sweden is is just asking for trouble. So I, I know that I always start barracks. Granted, I don't play nearly as high-level players as these two do, but I wouldn't be surprised to see... Kevin go barracks and then possibly get to H3 as quickly as possible, get out that uh, preeminent composition of the skirmishers and the Reuters and uh, make something happen. But I want to point something out here right away. Look at how Sheik has spread out his kind of transition economy, right? So I think a lot of players starting with Sweden in H2, which is something that, that I do, and I'm trying to pick up Sweden because uh, I'm actually, I haven't told anybody this yet. Uh, well, I made an announcement about it, but I am actually playing uh, my first tournament uh, that is being sponsored by Free Food Party, the Cavern Combat uh, number three, I think which is a 1600 ELO and below tournament. So I'm trying to pick up Swedes as one of the, the one of the sids to add to my pool just because I like their aesthetic, but uh, I don't know how viable that's going to be competitively. But I, I really love, getting back to my point, how Shake is spreading out his torps rather than booming on one mine, then moving to the next mine. He's kind of booming on all three slowly at once, meaning his economy is going to be a lot harder to hit all in one spot. Meanwhile... It looks like Dutch did age with the Quartermaster, because of course he did. And he is sending the 700 wood, because of course he is. And Shake, meanwhile, um, did he... Ah, there it is. There's the outpost. So, looks like he aged with the Governor. 
and sending dominions as his first card. So looks like both players are going to give their ecos a shot in the arm right away before they go into anything too heavy with their military. Although we do see some Carolians being produced by Shake. Now it's gonna be interesting to see whether he puts down a second barracks and goes all in, or if this is some sort of like 10 Carolian semi FF that'll, you know, transition to some third age play. But uh, oh, as we predicted, uh, call me the prophet. <laughs> um, it looks like Kevin is putting down the barracks here. Probably going to be getting out some skirms. I don't know if he's going to be getting out just maybe five or ten and then trying to transition to the third age or if he's going to try to play age two here. But uh, looks like Shake is going to follow up with the 700 wood of his own and Kevin going down with the bank wagon and the market as well. So um, you see a lot of Dutch players now, and this is something I just started doing as Dutch. Totally changed the way I play the Civ, and, and I'm so glad I started doing this, but... You know, a lot of Dutch players, they spend that 400 wood to get the military building in the two houses. But now I see more and more players investing that initial 400 wood into the second bank early and then using the 700 wood to get down a military building, a market, hunting dogs, the second bank, and then possibly a house. Uh, and then with your 600 wood, you get down a stable or a barracks, whatever you don't have, and then three to four houses. Meanwhile... We might be seeing some raiding here by the Carolean skirmishers popping out just in time. Oh, actually, no, a little bit late. They're not going to save this poor villager who uh, was kind of trapped. I'm I'm actually kind of I'm kind of perplexed by Kevin's bank placement here. He kind of blocks off a lot of his bills from getting to that coin mine. Um, maybe maybe there's some high level reason for it. I do not know. But what I do know is that Sheik has taken a massive amount of map control. Just look at how much vision he has here. Already up to 110 tort population. Meanwhile, Great Coat's coming in for uh, Kevin to buff up those Dutch villagers. And Engelsburg Ironworks coming in for Sheik. So, pretty standard card prog <laughs> progression. We have three settlers, we have dominions, we have 700 wood and Engelsburg. Now, it'll be interesting to see if he goes for his foundry next or 700 coin and goes for more of a fortress play. But uh, we do see the second barracks come down. Double Carolean spam. I wonder what his plan is because he knows his, he knows his opponent started skirm. Is he just going to try to mass Caroleans and, and power through? I don't know. It's, it's a little bit risky, right? Because these age two Dutch skirmishers just melt these Carolians. Look, uh, he marched through the base, lost half of his Carolians, and and did almost no damage. So it just goes to show you, age two Carolians, um, yeah, man, they're they're tough to use well, and that's why I see a lot of Swedish players actually starting Hussar, which is is something that I think is kind of a new development. But um, the Cav start is becoming more and more popular. Meanwhile, Kevin doing something a bit unorthodox here. I, is he going to play age two Dutch? That is so risky, but I mean, it might work out against Sweden, right? Because he has the composition he needs right now to defeat whatever Sweden can get out. Um, he has 10 pikes. He's even getting out some Hussar. He's got his four banks, decided not to go with the super heavy fifth bank with that 600 wood, which I think I agree with. I think getting out the stable here was was the more viable play. Getting out some cav is going to be good, especially as the artillery foundry is going down for Sweden and the one leather cannon is out. So finally, we have an answer to the skirmishers, but these, oh, these leather cannons, they're so squishy. In come the Hussar. The leather cannon is going to be protected, but it's taking so much fire from these skirmishers. And that's the thing about leather cannons that makes them so hard to use is that they are so squishy that even their counter, once they're in range, can do so much damage to them. However, uh, did pick off quite a few of these skirmishers for that one leather cannon and uh, is getting up quite a mass of Carolians here. 20 Carolians out for Shake. Meanwhile, only four skirmishers, 10 pikes, and about five Hussar for Kevin. So I don't know if this is something he can push into. Meanwhile, he's going to be sending 700 coin, which is... Um, I, I actually don't know if that's a super common shipment for high-level Dutch play. I know I hardly send it, but oh my god! Four leather cannons coming out, and uh, wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> Shake is just continuing to hit the, the, the cannon button, just more, more, more! 
Uh, <laughs> which is actually, I think it's a good response to uh, to the skirmishers that have come out, and as well as the pikemen. And he's got enough Carolians that he's going to be able to protect against this small amount of Hussar, even sending two leather cannons. So if he plays his card right, he's going to have six leather cannons to perhaps push into this Dutch base with. Although, I must admit, Kevin has done a pretty good job walling off his base. He's got his less important buildings out front, kind of protecting his more uh, valuable infrastructure. However, this is going to be a tough mass for the Dutch player to counter, especially since he's aging right now. Okay, so it looks like Sweden has a very close timing. You, mm, okay. Sending his Hus back to raid, which I like. He's going to be able to get a couple Vil kills here. One here, perhaps one or two more here. But meanwhile, the Swedish army is moving, and it looks like we have 28 Carolians and 6 leather cannons marching into the Dutch base. Meanwhile, the only thing to guard the Dutch base is a handful of skirmishers and 10 pikes, which are going to be almost useless. So let's see what Shake does here. He's got to do some critical damage right away because Kevin is aged up. The nine Reuters are on the way along with Reuters being produced. And we now have veteran skirmishers against age two unupgraded Carolians. There is no arsenal. So we have none, none of the H2 upgrades. Uh, I don't know why I couldn't speak there for a second, but uh, oh my God, these leather cannons going to eviscerate this bank. And there's really nothing that Kevin can do about it at the moment, but out come the nine Reuters gonna pair up with the five Reuters that were already produced and 14 Reuters, even as cheap as they are, as far as skir or, uh, Dragoon units go, they're going to be able to kind of one bang these uh, these leather cannons. One leather cannon is going to go down. Another one going down. And look at that. The Reuters just able to kind of one shot these leather cannons. But at the same time, these Reuters are getting eviscerated. I don't know why I like that word so much today. But they are going down quickly to the Carolians. And three leather cannons still surviving. However, Shake has taken quite a few losses. And uh, Kevin is still in the third age. More Reuters coming out, more skirms coming out, eight skirmishers on the way. So I think Kevin's going to be able to hold this here. And uh, yeah, just look at him completely ignoring, completely ignoring the Carolians and just targeting those leather cannons. Because if he takes down the leather cannons, he's going to be able to mop up these Carolians hardly, I mean, with hardly any effort. Look at how quickly they're going down. And uh, the Vils are back to work. Meanwhile, the second Swedish push coming in, but I just don't think it's going to have enough momentum. I mean, he took down a bank. He took down a house. That's good. But Dutch is still in age three now, and he's still got seven Reuters. He's still got seven Skirms. He's still got three banks, and he'll be able to rebuild that fourth bank relatively quickly. But uh, three more leather cannons. They are going to do well. Look at that volley. Oh, my God. <laughs> Even the Dutch Vils getting involved. I don't know if they meant to be here. Uh, awkward party moment. Aw. They shot that poor woman. All she wanted to do was gather from that guanaco. I always thought these were llamas. Are guanacos llamas? Is that another word for llama? Let me know in the chat, please. <laughs> but, uh, oh, the ten pikes finding a use. And see, this is, this is why Kevin will play Dutch better than I ever will. Because I am so bad at using my units uh, secondarily. So like having a main army and then sending off a, a small batch of units to go do something else like harass or raid. It's something I've never been very good at. And it's probably because my micro is so poor. But uh, meanwhile, a church going down for the XP and an arsenal going down for the Dutch player. Meanwhile, I don't think, yeah, still no arsenal for Shake, And he's still in age two. He's gotta be, he's gotta be gearing up to age as well, right? Like, he can't hope to fight Kevin in, in H2 as Sweden. He's got no shot of winning if he stays in H2. Not a professional opinion, but the Sassar gonna target the leather cannons, and the next batch of leather cannons going down, well, eh, there's one left. But one leather cannon does not an army make. And more Carolians coming out here. So Shake sticking to the Carolean spam, and I can certainly see why Shake doesn't like this matchup. This is a tough matchup for Sweden. I mean, Dutch is not a strong sieve, but I feel like Sweden is like the, one of the one of the few sieves that they do fairly well against. 
simply because they're one of the few sieves that Dutch can combat in Age 2. Um, you know, there are a lot of sieves like, like Brit and Aztec and even Russia that, that Dutch struggle to combat in Age 2, but I feel like Sweden's one of the, the, one of the sieves that they can go pound for pound with. And I think that's just because Sweden's in such a weak spot right now. I mean, I, I've looked at a lot of tier lists, and I have not seen one that has Sweden higher than, like, C tier. Um, hopefully, hopefully they'll, they'll go back to their former glory, but uh, we'll have to see. Three more leather cannons are going to pop out here. Going to do a fair amount of damage to the skirmishers, but they're so close to these Reuters that the Reuters are going to come in and just immediately one-shot them. And, yeah, more Reuters joining the fray. I mean, I really like, I, I love that Shake's putting up a fight here. He's managing to survive in H2 as Sweden against H3 Dutch, which is more impressive than, than it may sound. Because um, this is kind of Dutch's power spike, right? So maybe he can hope to kind of outlast, uh, outlast the H3 Dutch surge, but I don't know. I mean, he's at 170 Torp Pop. It's not like he has a terrible economy. 35 Vils versus 34, but... Dutch also has three banks. He's got an arsenal. Ah, uh, he's an age ahead. What does Dutch have left to send? Eh, he doesn't have much left to send, actually. However, he could send his, uh, he could send his upgrade cards, and that would make those skirmishers even deadlier. And, uh, yeah, just so many Carolians going down. I don't think, I don't think Shake can, can overcome this. More Carolians coming out. Gonna be able to catch those skirmishers in a good spot. But meanwhile, he's had to deal with these troublesome pikes, and even the Reuters able to do good damage against these Carolians. And I think that's going to be GG. Shake eventually able to get up to Fortress Age, but I think he realized that by the time he got any units out, he would have lost both these barracks and perhaps this artillery foundry. And, I mean, what do you do at that point? He's just going to siege down all your torps, and yeah, you're in Age 3, you can send, you know, two Falks, but... Against this many Reuters, you know, even two Falks isn't going to be very helpful. So, well played by both players. I mean, th that's obvious, right? Both these guys are super high level. Um, Shake is actually on the verge of hitting 2,000 ELO. And uh, I, I could not be more happy for him. I Again, I think Shake is an incredible player. He's even uh, offered to coach me in Sweden, which I think is just super nice. Um, but I've taken a lot of notes here from both, both players. And that's why I wanted to cast this game so much because, you know, with my tournament match coming up, uh, oh crap, it's tomorrow. <laughs> oh man. Um, I don't know why I'm nervous. It's not even, it's not even that big of a tournament, but, uh, I've just never been in a tournament before and I have no illusions of winning, but I want to do the best I can. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that once I finish those games, however far I get, um, if the organizers allow me, I will be able to upload them here and cast them so that um, you guys get a chance to criticize my play. Because, you know, I spend so much time, um, you know, pointing out what other players are doing. I think it's only fair that I put my play up to the test and I let people rip it apart because, trust me, <laughs> when you see me play, you will realize, holy crap, there's there's so much that this guy could improve on. But uh, anyway, that is enough for me. Uh, GG to both Shake and Kevin. Awesome players, awesome people. And uh, also, you guys are some pretty awesome people too. Once again, thank you for 100 subscribers. It's just a number, but it's a number that means a lot to me. And uh, I, hope you'll, I hope you'll continue on this little uh, Age of Empires 3 journey we're on for however long it goes. But until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. See you later.